Hey there, this is Etsy Wisdom. My name is Diane. Thank you for coming by. Um, today I'm going to work on the Senate races. I'm going to look into those pretty quick. I'm going to try to make it quick. But before I do that, I wanted to share um, some thoughts on the Israeli hostages that were <clears throat> murdered a few, like within a day or two of being found. Especially, um, well, not especially, but the one whose parents had uh, spoke at the Democratic National Convention, Herschel Goldberg Poland. I, it's unfathomable uh, pain and grief they must be feeling. I can't, I can't even imagine. Um, first, I wanted to suggest that we, as a group, a community, or personally. I'm going to do this is that we send a blanket or uh, encircle those families, all of those families, or even those, the families of the hostages, the families who have been hurt and killed in this whole situation, send them love and light, blanket them with love and light. So they, so that God, because we're all one, we are all connected. And this is a real tangible thing that the light of God and the, may give them strength and comfort as they grieve this unimaginable tragedy. And as we do that, it also raises the whole vibration around the world, just a fraction. But I think that's something we can do. And because I can't do much else from my end, it's what I think it's, it's possible because I said we, we're all connected. Um, yeah, I just, it's a horrible thing. Uh, and real quick, just before I do that, I, I, you know, Netanyahu, I've talked to you before about him and I'm not going to get into the back and forth. Who's right. Who's wrong about this whole thing. I'm just looking at it from the human perspective and general <clears throat> images that I get. Netanyahu, I've said in the past is corrupt. Hamas is a terrorist organization different things yet. When I look at Netanyahu, I haven't looked in Hamas at all, and I'm not going to. <clears throat> but as a president or prime minister, whatever his title is, Netanyahu is determined when I get into his energy to wipe up all of Gaza. He wants to take it back. He wants the whole, he wants Israel to move into that area. And he's using this as an excuse kind of. So I do feel when I got into his energy and I looked into the timeline and I've seen him as an ice cream cone, by the way, and he's melting. He is melting kind of like Trump and his cake. Netanyahu is melting. He, something big change is happening, coming up. I know all the protests are happening now to get him to either step down or do something or, you know, address the ceasefire because they haven't been doing it to get their hostages home. I felt a big change and I don't know if it's, you know, time is a funny thing, but I do see some big change happening. So it's quite possible there could be a ceasefire. Not a hundred percent. This big change could relate to, you know, something else happening. And I couldn't even pin it down, but there's going to be a big shift in that area. So hopefully, and it feels good. It doesn't feel bad. So anyway, let us send love and light to those families and peace and comfort as best that we can do in their horrific situation. At least they'll get their boy back. Anyway, today I'm going to uh, look into the Senate races back to politics onto um, somebody had asked about Ken Paxton in Texas and his rank, uh, wrangling up DNA evidence. Um, I also looked into the Senate race in Florida. Somebody asked about Rick Scott versus Debbie Marcus Powell. Looked into that. Took a peek into John Tester. I had done his reading before. Looked at that. Josh Hawley in Missouri. Uh, I looked into him. And also somebody had asked about Tulsi Gabbard and why she's fallen for Trump or why he's... So I looked into that. And also... What's about the governor of Utah? Uh, I think it's Cox, James Cox, maybe. He went to the Arlington Cemetery and he 
did some pushback about doing that video. He seemed to go along with the program that Trump put forth. So I want to look at that. Senate races. And then, like I mentioned before, I will look into Brandy um, Lee, or I'm sorry, not Brandy, Bandy Lee, the doctor who is, wrote the book, uh, The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump. I, I really got into her energy. It's fascinating about past lives and stuff. All right, long, long beginning here. Let's get started. Let's begin. Thank you again. Uh, please subscribe, like, share, all those things. I'd love it if you guys do that. And those of you who have newly subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful. Uh, so Ken Paxton, we're going to start there. When I got into his energy, and I think he was recently impeached. Uh, he was impeached, but he didn't find he wasn't found guilty. I felt his energy. He's been. Uh, you know, being very vocal. So after he won that or he wasn't convicted, he's going after Democratic groups, protesters, people that oppose him, politicians, other people. So he's like on a warpath to do that. So Ken Paxton has, uh, he rated, a, there was a Democratic poll group. She, this older lady who, um, she is 87 years old. <clears throat> he rated her home. She's part of the supporting Hispanics to get to the to the voting booths. And she's you know, a, a democratic worker. Anyway, they raided her home, 87 years old, and they took everything, her computers, her phones, her smartwatch, everything. And what I saw, so I'm going to give you general ideas about what I see. I do see him. It's funny. I see him. I feel like I have a cowboy hat on. And I don't know if he was ever in the, like, Texas Rangers or anything like that, but I feel like he imagines himself as a cowboy, you know, like this idealistic idea of a cowboy and doing the right thing. Black and black versus white, white versus black. Everything is, you're bad, I'm good. It's all that. And I see him very, I feel also very tight to my body when I'm in his energy. Like he doesn't feel expansive. He feels controlled. Although I have a sense he's very emotional or angry. He feels controlled and it's hard to penetrate that when I'm in this. So he's controlled. And I, I heard some things that he said, um, he knows what's right. He's not going back. That means he says, I win. He says, I'm in charge. And he feels powerful. He feels powerful. And according to what I saw, I'm hunting and fishing. You know, he's a, is attorney general. So, I mean, attorney generals can hunt and fish, but maybe he comes from that, but that's what I got. It may not be true or not. I don't know, but I see him like taking, like if you had a big board here and a board here of all of Texas and he's pull, like a triangle and sweeping it in and gathering all this information, all this data, all this DNA samples, he's sampling people, asylum seekers, immigrants, legal or illegal, sampling everybody. And because these people want to get into the country, they succumb to the DNA sampling because they don't want to say no because it might make them not come in. So he's doing that a lot. He's not just, he's all sorts of information. He's gathering all this information. And it's like he's pulling it in and it condensing and tensing and tensing. So he's cleaning and purging every scrap of inequity. He feels like there's all these people are not doing things right or they're, semi-criminals or they came in and they you know their children were born here and they you know anything that's remotely questionable he believes they cheated somehow he really believes that um and they are cheating he feels like it's sneaky he feels like they're doing stuff somewhere underground and he's gonna ferret it out um and he removes so during the election i'm asking about how it's going to go during the election time is I saw him gathering all this data, all these voter rolls, all these votes from these potentially uh, incorrect or illegal voting possibility voters. And he, and he puts them over here and he's setting them aside. So all these other people, okay, they're legal, they're voting all these other votes, which probably aren't for Trump. I think he even checks to see if they're a Democrat. I think he even goes through that and said, if you're a Democrat, we're even going to question every single one and put them over here. And 
it feels like the election happens, but he is got all of these votes and they're all going to have to go to court. The feds are going to step in to facilitate somehow making this a legal situation and fair, but he is going to drag it out. Every, all of this nonsense, all of this noise from people who he thinks are questionable or they're voting not for Trump or whatever, or even just, he thinks that they're Ill, Ill, um, illegitimate. He will, everything has to be fought. He's just going to keep them over here and everything drip and drab, going to court, going to court. I don't think he cares. Um, the feds will help a little, but Texas is pretty locked down. It is pretty locked down. The I saw like a window, a, a window going down and water rushing through. But, and these are those votes that are not ones that he thinks are fair or, you know, are wrong. Only some are getting through. That window is being closed down, and so this water is just pr trickling through this um, the space between the window and the sill. He is really going to make it difficult. He is making it difficult, and um, he doesn't care. He feels like he's doing the right thing, um, and eventually, which is interesting. So this is <laughs> eventually. I saw after this, and I don't know if he will, no, he'll be gone by then. But Texas is going to go through a, I don't want to say a renaissance or a resurgence or a change, a shift to go back towards, I got this, a Southern charm kind of model. You know, Texas is, now they have signs that don't mess with Texas when you're driving down the road and they love their guns and everything, but they're going to shift towards like change their, um, because of this, I think it's going to, they have to change their reputation to a Southern charm kind of identity. I think that's going to be a goal of the state of Texas chamber of commerce or whatever it is <laughs> trying to get people to understand they're not mean there and they like everybody, but not now. Um, well, not that everybody in Texas is like that. Let's see if I have, cause I have my notes here. Yeah, that's it. All right, that's Ken Paxton. Uh, gonna make it hard. The state. If I look at the state, will it go? No, I've already looked into Ted Cruz. There, they have so he has so much money. Um, Colin Allred has got a huge swath of people in West Texas. Like more rural people voted for Cruz, I think. But there's a huge bunch. But the money, Ted Cruz has the money. Uh, Texas emperor. Yeah. They love Trump. They love him or people love that feeling of having a leader and yeah, they're going to stick with, they're going to stay as a Republican state. Okay. Rick Scott versus Debbie Margasol Powell. Um, it's funny. I saw, I don't know, this may be mean. I, I'm, I really want to bring lightness and love into the world. But this is just an image I got. I saw him as Skeletor. You know, the comic book character kind of looks like that a little bit. Uh, anyway, he, I see him, in, I'm in his energy and she's there. He's attacking her with machetes. Like he's trying to slice her up. But it's like, if, you know, you try to slice up a ghost. If you can imagine that. It goes right through him and it doesn't do any damage. That's what I feel like he's doing. He's not getting anywhere with it. So they don't cut her. So I feel like it's um, like you can't do that much damage. Like she's got some momentum. She's doing pretty good. I see the east coast of Florida. If you took Florida, which is a peninsula, obviously, on the east side, on the Atlantic Ocean side, you I could see more people voting for her over there. And the maybe they're just more democratic because Miami's there. And down in the Keys, I'm not sure, but yeah, I know Florida is, I think is possible to switch over. Um, they, I saw Florida people when I got into Florida, I see, he sees him as unstable and they want changes. So it's quite possible uh, he will lose. She's an underdog and I think she might win actually. 
So, yay. I'll pull a card for that. Let's see. Well, let's see. Debbie Margasol Powell. Two of Pentacles. It's going to be tight. But I see the first impression I got was this woman who's kind of dancing. Oh, let's see if I can do that. Yeah. She's kind of dancing. And I feel like this is her happy and she's juggling, but it might be too, too many, um, close race, too close initially, but I think it's going to win. They're going to do a lot of studying. The ballots are going to be examined. I got the page of wands with a uh, magnifying glass. They're going to examine every ballot ballot. Okay. John Tester in Montana, who's been there quite a few years, maybe six or seven years. Um, I see John Sheehy, he's younger and he's picking up people. That's his competition there. Um, and people like his youth or his energy. John Tester's, you know, he's a little bit older. And, and I've said this in the past, he reminded me of an old history teacher from high school, Mr. Ruff, who had the flat top. His hair is pretty similar. Some people don't, you know, they like a look and they never change. And that's the kind of feeling I get with John Tester. He, you know, rocked it and, you know, when he was 20 and he's still rocking it now. Uh, John Tester. Oh, he's worried he doesn't have enough money. Um, John Tester. Oh, Knight of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. But he is going to get money. He is going to get, um, some support. Let's see. I'm just going to sit on this for a second. The other day when I looked at it, I saw Ch Tester pulling it out today. And I also saw a pendulum. I don't know if I mentioned that. I saw a pendulum. I think people are undecided. Because John Tester has not done anything bad. And he's fine. And he has name recognition. But he's a Democrat. And that word is just bad. If I look at the election night, I see John Tester saying thank you. So today, in this moment, and time is funny, like I said, I think that, that he'll win. Okay. Josh Hawley. Uh, he, you now we lived in Missouri for like a year. I love Missouri. Well, there's different parts. Missouri is a very unusual state. It's, it's southern, but it also is midwestern, and it's kind of Republican out in the rural areas and Democrat, you know, in Kansas City and um, St. Louis. So it's a mixed bag. But um, Missourians are wonderful people. You can, they like, it's a funny weather too. Anyway, Josh Hawley. And I see him as careful. Like I saw him in a hole. Like he only pops his head up like he's in the ground and he looks up when he has to, and then he pops back down. He's like, don't worry. I'm yeah, I'm here. I'm here. And yes, I'm going to fight for you. And I'm doing this and this. And then he pops back down. I think he's super cautious, super careful, um, targeted speaking engagements, targeted words that he used that he makes sure there is nothing that anybody could grab onto. He's very careful, even though um, <clears throat> in the past he's, you know, an election denier and he's all do, he does that. But, <clears throat> you know, I have to re read my notes because I can't remember. Um, West, oh, Western Missouri is better for him. He like Western Missouri is more voting for him. He lies about his activities. It's a, I wrote down. He's not truthful. And... Um, he's calculated in how he spends his time in the public. And I think, or what rallies he's do, do, does in good places that support him. He's very careful about that. And I wrote me when underlined. Okay. Josh Holly will Josh Holly will you win in November. 
King of Wands, Two of Wands, more twos. We are doing the twos, Ace of Pentacles. Looks like it, he might. Yeah, looks like he may win as of today. Unless something big happens, people catch him in his lies. Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, I don't know if she's an Aries. I have a big sense of Aries energy about her. She is um, gung-ho. I feel this gung-ho energy in Aries. People tend to be, you know, the leaders, social, uh, soldiers, policemen, firemen, uh, generals, any kind of leader that has a lot of energy. Um, Tim Walls, he's coach. He's an Aries. So it's that kind of energy. She has gone from being a Democrat to a Republican, and she has globbed on to Trump because somehow he reminds her of a military general or somebody who's very decisive and very, although we know he leaves and wobbles and depending on the minute or the day who's spoken to him, what group. But she thinks of him as strong and vital and virile, and she's drawn to power. And that's what, I mean, it's a simple thing that anybody could probably say that's what's happening. But when she looks at him, she sees American flags and she's very patriotic. I know that sounds kind of weird, but you'd think she'd do the math and see that he's advocating uh, powerful, like unquestioned power in as a president and eliminating all the departments that would keep him in check. She doesn't seem to, so maybe she does. She really doesn't mind that too much. She thinks that because he'll be powerful, I think she thinks he might, she's, he's going to win and she wants to be part of that. All right. The governor, all right. The governor of Utah, Spencer Cox. I thought it was James. I don't know where I got James from. Spencer. It's a more modern name. And I look at his eyes. I see a weak person when I saw his pictures, just his smile. I don't feel he's strong. And he separates Trump from the soldiers and he's never been able to get close to Trump. And he found this as an opportunity. Um, he, he was convinced that it was a positive thing going in to Arlington cemetery to be with those families. And he felt strongly about it, which he should being with those families that lost their sons or daughters in Afghanistan. But he's embarrassed now. But he's too proud is the energy I or the feeling I got to really go on and on about what he did wrong. I think he has apologized recently. Um, I think later he will continue to do better. Um, but the Republicans and Trump pressured him to do this situation. And he wasn't questioning too many things. They pressured him to make a statement early on that they were right and this cemetery worker was wrong and he was awestruck that's the word i got out he was awestruck at trump's appearance he's just i felt very weak and kind of i don't know who i am i don't know what my character traits are although i'm assuming as mormon and usually mormons have high standards and to serve and do the right thing and that's my experience from being in Arizona for many years. A lot of good friends. I have nothing bad to say about Mormons. So can't put that there. But he will eventually. I just wanted to get into that energy and um, see how that was going to go. Now, quickly, Matt Gates. I looked at him to see if he's going to win his, because I think he's very, he's doing fine in his role or at his uh, district. He's doing well. What I did see is he will win because he's got the, the most of the votes there, the Republican, but his life is going to crack apart. I felt like I saw like a crackling shell, like a sugar, like if you can imagine a sugar dome over something that looks so beautiful and lovely, like a dessert and you crack it and it just disintegrates and it shoots shards all over the table. That's the impression I get. That's what's going to happen to Matt Gates. 
I think that's it. Okay. I think I made it minor, just a little bit shorter. That's good. All right. Till next time, you guys have a good uh, week. Happy Labor Day. Today's Labor Day. And even up here, they have uh, Labor Day. So you guys take care. Bye.